We worship the God who inhabits our world and indwells our lives. We need not look up to find God. We need only to look around, within ourselves, beyond ourselves, into the eyes of another. We need not listen for a distant thunder to find God. We need only listen to the music of life, the words of children, the questions of the curious, the rhythm of a heartbeat. We need not gather in a specific way to know God. We need only to trust in the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth who calls us together and binds us in love as we worship, pray, and serve in the name of the risen Christ. Welcome to our online digital worship experience with us as Christ the King Lutheran Church. We are glad that you are joining us in this forum today, and we pray that this time together through this video, through the words that are heard, through the songs, through the prayers, through the hearing of the gospel, that this time may bring comfort and peace to you and your families. Today we're going to hear in our first reading Paul speaking to the Athenians about worship of an unknown God. For some of us, that may describe the God who we worship, a God who is unknowable, a God whose form we cannot see. And in these days of the continued response to the pandemic, we may not know where God's presence is. Is. We may not know where God is showing up to us, and that may be concerning to us. But Paul proclaims this unknown God to the Athenians, and he says, It is in this God that we move and live and have our being, that God is in us, that God is known through us, and that there is nothing that separates us from that presence of God. As we move into our worship space to, today, let us take just a couple of breaths, and as we breathe, to know the presence of God that is in us and moving through us with each breath that we take and allow the Spirit of God to bring us fully into this moment. And we pray through these breaths that God's presence may be deeply felt. So let us begin with a couple breaths together. Let us pray. God of grace and love, your spirit walks alongside of us, even today, wherever we may be. And it is through your spirit that we come to know the depths of love that you have for us. Guide us today even deeper into that love so that we may go out into this world to be love for others, to be your spirit as we help and serve and spend time within our communities and families. Give us courage this day to be honest and vulnerable with you and with others so that we may encounter the full embrace of your spirit and your love. We give you thanks, God, that you gather us in worship. Give us your presence today. Amen. is alive and comes to breathe. 
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. In Christ we are risen. We are risen indeed. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, we come together to worship as a people who would like to think that we love you with all our hearts and souls, with all our might. But there are so many other things and concerns in our lives that clamor for our attention. Too often we relegate you to Sundays and those times when we want you to rescue us. Most of us really do want you to be the one in whom we live and move and have our being. We really do want to hear your voice above all the other voices in our lives. But we get bogged down in the daily routine. We forget who we are. We forget who you are. We forget what the church is supposed to be. So here we are, worshiping before you today with our human brokenness and competing forces within us, asking that you would make yourself known to us, that you would help us to recognize the presence of the holy, that you would continue to challenge us, inspire us, and make us into the people you need us to be. Through Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. first reading is from Acts chapter 17 verses 22 through 31. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the gospel according to John the 14th chapter, verses 15 through 21. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ. 
There is nothing simple about the decisions that we have to make each day. Right now in the midst of this pandemic, even simple decisions like should I go to the grocery store or not? Should I go get my hair done? Should I schedule a time for friends to be able to gather together for a meal? Or should I find time for my son to have a play date with other friends? These things used to be extremely simple to make decisions about, but today are extraordinarily complex. We have to decide how we go to do something, when we go to do something, who we go to do something with, and what precautions do we take in order to do it. And it's not just us. Each of us individually has difficult decisions that we now have to make each and every day. But think about all of the other organizations that we are surrounded by, the local schools and teachers and administrators that are trying to decide what does school look like in this next year ahead. Folks that are going back to work trying to determine when do I go back to work or how do I go back to work or whether I even open a business up and how do I open a business up for the public to participate within. And then especially for us as a church, not just our congregation, but congregations throughout our country, what does it look like to make determinations to gather again and how do we gather when that happens? Those decisions are not simple. They're not a yes or no answer. They require much thought and contemplation and discernment over how do we do the things that we do. And for each of us, our context, our specific situations will dictate how it is that we respond as we can't necessarily look to others for what they are doing because each of us has different circumstances that we're entering into these days. And we need help in order to make the decisions that we are faced with. And that is what our gospel passage today is all about. Knowing that we have the Spirit of God, the Advocate, walking alongside of us. The Helper, given by Jesus to help guide us into what does it look like to love, live, and give as disciples here and now today. Because as we begin this gospel passage, it seems like it should be so easy. Jesus says, if you love me you will keep my commandments. And as Jesus speaks about his commandments, we immediately go back to chapter 13, just a few verses before what we hear today, as Jesus gives the disciples the new commandment, to love one another as I have loved you. Jesus, throughout all of the Gospels, reiterates the commandments quite simply. He says, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, receive that love that I have shown you, and then love one another as you are loved by me. Simple enough, right? Not complex at all. (laughs) We know that that's not true. Because what it means to love others as we have been loved by Jesus is just as complex as all of the other decisions that we may have in front of us today. Think about this. What does it mean to love our families today? For me, that means balancing the responsibilities I have as a pastor and the responsibilities I have as a husband together with now the responsibilities I have in loving my son, Sam, and making time for him when it already feels like I don't have enough time for myself or all of my other responsibilities. But in order to love him necessitates that I decide how much time I spend with him and how I put other things aside in order to do so. And it's not just to spend time with him like we used to do a few months ago in order to have fun and to be able to help support him. Is Now we also have to love him through being able to teach him and guiding him through the homeschool process that we are being given by the school that he participates at. And how do we love a young child as they're trying to make sense of this world that we are all living through today where we can't go out and do the things that we want to do, but yet their developmental process can't handle necessarily all of the intricacies of what's truly happening with the pandemic around us? What does it mean to love our children is a very complex question today. How do we love others as we receive that love from Jesus? And when we look at that question, how do we love others then systemically? Oh, that's even more complex. We know that this pandemic is hitting 
our communities differently depending on where we live. Folks that live in middle to upper income areas are not seeing the same difficulties and struggles that our low income families are. We heard just this last week that over 40% of folks that are already the lowest income folks around us are the ones that have lost their jobs in the midst of this pandemic. The people that already did not have enough money are the ones that are struggling even more so today in this environment. And what does that mean for those of us that do have financial capacity or in places of leadership in our communities to walk alongside of others that are struggling and to love them and to act that out, not just person by person, neighbor by neighbor, but to look at the policies and structures of our world and ask, what does it mean to love our neighbor through the systems and policies that we really know that we need in place today? That is a complex question of how do we love one another as we have been loved by Jesus. But then if we bring that question home and living out these commandments that Jesus has given us, what does it mean to even receive that love of Jesus for us? For those of us that may feel like we want to love, but we can't because we still can't leave our homes. Or what does it mean for those of us that are trying to love, but we just don't feel like we have enough capacity, enough energy to be able to continue to love? And then what does that mean for us that struggle to feel like we ourselves are even enough, that we are even worth loving ourselves? It is incredibly complex and difficult in the circumstances that we live in today to know what does it mean to live out these commandments. That even though we may love Jesus, we may cry out and say, Jesus, I don't know how to love others or even love myself the way that you love me. And it's there that we have a moment where we can hear the promise held within this gospel passage today, where Jesus comes alongside his disciples, those who very soon will feel the depths of separation and grief as they see him die on a cross, where they may feel like they are alone without anyone left to help them or guide them along this way of life that Jesus has shown them. And Jesus says to these disciples, I will not leave you orphaned. I will send another advocate, another helper, another person who will walk alongside of you, who will guide you and support you as you strive to live out these commandments, as you continue to love me and love others around you. You will not be alone and that you will abide in me as I abide in you and as I abide in the Father. That this is the promise that Jesus leaves with his disciples. That we will not be left alone to figure this all out by ourselves. But in fact, the Spirit of God walks with us through this complex journey of determining how to love one another. And truly having the courage to take one step in front of the other as we do so. Earlier this week in our Bible study... I asked the group of those that gathered with us online on Zoom, when you think about the Holy Spirit or the advocate, the helper who we hear Jesus describe today, what words come to mind or what experiences do you have? Some people in the group said that the presence of the Spirit is mysterious. It's really hard to put words to what the Spirit's presence means. But there were others in the group that had very tangible examples of where they have experienced the Spirit. One person said the Spirit is present in the neighbor or the person across the street who waves at me each day and that offers a smile to us one another. That the Spirit is not something that is only mysterious or nebulous, something that we can't give words to, but the Spirit is actually present in the reality of those people who help us with an action or a word or a smile. And that is the truth of the gospel that we receive in John, is that Jesus, as he gives the commandment to the disciples in chapter 13, to love one another as I love you, Jesus goes on to say that it is through your love that the world will know that you are my disciples. 
And then in chapter 20 in John, Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit upon the disciples, and then he sends them out to be the presence of Jesus in the midst of the world. He says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. The reality is the Spirit, yes, may be something that is beyond the words that we have, and that this presence of the Spirit of God or the Advocate the helper that walks alongside of us, that presence of the Spirit may be mysterious in some ways, but in many ways, the presence of the Spirit helping us determine how we love one another and act out this way of life that Jesus has given us is not nebulous. It's very concrete. The presence of the Spirit shows up in community. Because Jesus has formed the community, the body of Christ, to be the church, to be the presence of the Spirit in the world. And that is the invitation we have today as we contemplate this good news that Jesus, the Advocate, walks alongside of us through the Spirit. It's not that we are walked alongside of by a mysterious force. It's that the Spirit shows up in the people that we allow to walk alongside of us. Too often in our lives, in our families, in our world, we want to jump specifically to the technical answers. How do we do something or what are we supposed to do? When in fact, the more important question often is who are we doing it with? Who are we walking alongside of and who are we walking alongside of in order to be able to discern together what are the appropriate steps forward? How do we love one another in a complex time? And that that is the question I want to leave with each of us today. In the midst of wherever we may be or whatever circumstances we may be in ourselves or whatever circumstances we're going to be walking through communally as the church, rather than jumping ahead too quickly to what we should do, let's simply invite the Spirit into our lives as we ask, who is walking alongside of us? Who are those people that can guide you and support you and give you the help that you need today? Where can you allow God to show up in and through another person? And too often, and I know that this is true for me, I don't invite the help of another. I don't recognize the people that are walking alongside of me who want to help because I too quickly say, I don't need help. I can do it all on my own. And the invitation that we have in this opportunity is to say, you know what? The Spirit of God is with me, and I trust that the Spirit is going to show up through the other people that I can reach out to, and I can say, you know what? I do need help. I need help in the daily tasks that are in front of me. I need help in talking through what are the steps that need to happen. I need help from another person to remind me that, in fact, I am a beloved child of God and that I am enough and that God is with me and creating me again anew today. Who is walking alongside of you and how can we collectively reach out to those people in our lives and say, you know what, I do need help today and invite through that vulnerable moment the presence of the Spirit of God to walk alongside of us through the community that we have surrounding us today. For some of us, that may be our family members, simply sitting down with a partner or another person in our family to say, I need to talk to you about what I'm going through. For some of us, it may be other friends that we've known for a short while or a long time. For some of us, it may even be reaching out to me as your pastor, not waiting for me to call you, but giving me a call and saying, Pastor, I need someone to talk to, to pick up the phone and to say, Pastor, will you talk with me today? And I invite you to take that step if you need it, to reach out to someone else or reach out to me and say, can we talk? Because it's in those moments where we invite these vulnerable conversations that we trust that the Spirit will show up, that the Spirit of God will walk alongside of us and that we will receive that love of God through Jesus in the Holy Spirit. And out of those conversations, we can all then discern and be empowered together to go out to our families, our friends, and our communities to love one another as we have received that love. Know that you are not alone. 
that Jesus does not leave us orphaned, that the Spirit is here with us today, and that we are here for one another, that I am here for you, that I love you, and that God loves you too. May God's peace guide us forward into these complex times as we all strive to love, live, and give like Jesus. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Abiding God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church as your followers to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Lord, in your mercy. You call all people of the world your children. Reform the nations through us as we care for the outcasts. Show mercy to the oppressed and speak truth to power as your prophets. Lord, in your mercy. You come near to us when we are lost 
and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer in any way. Lord, in your mercy, your commands are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises to work for justice, advocate for the voiceless, and free the oppressed and imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we entrust all for whom we pray, convinced of your mercy and compassion. We pray together. God of life and love, who brought forth the creation and made us who we are, we offer all of ourselves to you. Receive our talents, our energy, and our joy, and use us to share your love. Take our mistakes, our regrets, and our pain, and use us to bring your healing and restoration. Multiply and magnify our gifts and creativity in these dark days to spread your light, peace, and presence in the world. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I pray that you may receive those words of peace and feel them deeply, that God's peace is with you always. At this point in our service, I invite you to hit the pause button and in the email that you received or on our YouTube channel, you can go and celebrate communion either by yourself or with your family that you are gathered with. And that that video will walk you through all of the steps that you need in order to participate in the sacrament and to know that there are others in our world and in our community that are celebrating that sacrament with you as the body of Christ in this time. Let me also give a word of thanks for your generosity and the many ways that you are continuing to financially sustain our congregation and the many different organizations that are around us today. Because it's not just us as the church. There are other organizations like community ministry that are doing good work in supporting our neighbors. And so if you would like more information about how you can continue to support other organizations in addition to Christ the King and how you can give this day, please reach out to me or Lynette here in the church office and we would love to be able to provide more information for you. Let me also give thanks for the many ways that you have responded to our call to create a community response fund so that we can economically support uh, neighbors and community members in and through our church that are in a time of economic need. We've now raised over $9,700. We set a goal of 10,000. That means we are less than $300 away from hitting our goal. If you have the capacity to make even just a small gift Maybe it's even a second gift, maybe just a little bit over and above what you've already given will hit our goal and we can celebrate together as the church that we are living out our call today to love our neighbor as we have been loved by Jesus, not just spiritually, but through our generosity and through the economic generosity that we have the ability to be able to do at this time. If you do have any needs, as I talked about in the sermon today, please do reach out to me or to Lynette here in the church office, and we would love to be able to support you or to connect you with another person that can help walk alongside of you and give you the strength and the courage that you need to meet these days ahead. Know that next Sunday, May 24th, we will be having a congregational forum at 11.15 a.m. through Zoom, live online, or through the telephone. If you don't have access to Zoom on your computer, you can join us on the telephone to be able to talk about what are our next steps in terms of gathering together as a congregation face-to-face, -face, how we will make those decisions, and what it may look like for us to gather in the future. Pay close attention to the emails that you will receive throughout this week through the spiritual uh, disciplines that I will be providing for you to prepare for that conversation on the 24th. And if you need help in connecting to that conversation, again, please reach out to us and we will help you. So again, please know that we are with you and hear this blessing as we end our service today. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God.
flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, cause us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing.